We have a very special guest this morning who uh, is the, the head of the national banking system. All the very large banks report to he and, and his staff and his examiners. And he has been, this is his, I think it's uh, the Comptroller's fifth year in a row that he's come to our conference, which shows great respect for us and the work we do. Absolutely. Uh, did I get that right, uh, Mr. Comptroller? Close enough. But, um, you know, this is a fellow, um, I know I, I probably talk too much about Boston, you know, being from Boston. And I know half of you never understand what I'm saying because of my accent. But uh, he's also from Boston, but he doesn't have an accent like I do. But more importantly, when he, when he was the banking commissioner in, in Massachusetts, this was a guy that when I was in your position as a, a local developer, activist, fair housing person, that we could go to and, and have somebody who understood what we were trying to accomplish in the way of uh, creating more opportunity through the, uh-oh, we're not paying for that one more opportunity uh, through financial institutions to be able to invest in underserved communities. This is a guy who supported, well, I don't want to get him in trouble because he's already on a short list, so I'm not going to say it, but, but suffice it to say, uh, between the work he's been doing on FinTech, creating a CRA-like oversight of that, the work that he's done to bring a lot of these banks uh, uh, to heal and to, and to be more responsible, uh, you know, it's, he, he's been a true ally to the movement for economic justice. So please join me with a warm welcome to uh, Comptroller Tom Curry. Thank you, John, for that uh, very kind and warm welcome. Um, as John mentioned, our professional relationship goes way back, uh, and it's been invaluable to be able to share our pers my perspective and hear from John on community reinvestment since uh, I, be, I was Commissioner of Banks in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Um, John has been a steadfast advocate for expanding access to financial services, housing opportunities, and uh, importantly, in investments in underserved communities. The OCC shares these fundamental goals, and by working closely with the member organizations of the National Community Reinvestment Coalition, we can do even more to promote the vibrant and diverse banking system our economy depends on so that it can be uh, in a position to better serve the needs of consumers, businesses, and communities throughout our great nation. In the last five years, the OCC has devoted a great deal of effort not to just mitigating the fallout from the last financial crisis, but in terms of preventing its recurrence. To this end, we've redoubled our efforts to improve our supervisory processes, including those that ensure fair access for consumers and small businesses and fair treatment of bank customers. This renewed emphasis reflects a lesson that has become increasingly clear, that safe and sound banking operations and fair treatment of customers are both necessary and interdependent. This is expressed in the OCC's statutory mission statement, and I quote, it states, to ensure that national banks and federal savings associations operate in a safe and sound manner, provide fair access to financial services, treat customers fairly, and comply with applicable laws and regulations, end quote. In other words, banks cannot function safely and soundly unless they treat customers fairly and adhere to legal requirements, including consumer protection laws. And in a competitive and changing environment, the most successful banks will be those that provide fair access to all potential customers, including individuals outside the financial mainstream. It's also what the bank's customers demand. Three decades as a bank regulator have taught me that devoting appropriate resources to ensuring compliance with consumer protection requirements is just as critical for regulators as it is for financial institutions. With that in mind, a year ago, 
I established a new executive level department headed by Senior Deputy Comptroller Gravetta Gardner that brings together policy, supervision, and community outreach in the areas of consumer compliance, fair lending, Bank Secrecy Act Anti-Money Laundering, and the Community Reinvestment Act. The new department, Compliance and Community Affairs, or CCA for short, allows us to leverage agency resources to sharpen our uh, focus on these issues and make our priorities clear and consistent and streamline our communications with other regulators and organizations. CCC, CCA has three divisions. Compliance risk, which develops consistent policy, guidance, examination procedures, and examiner training related to CRA, fair lending, and other compliance issues throughout all of our examination units. There's compliance supervision, which applies an integrated risk-based approach across all of the OCC's supervision activities. It is responsible for the agency's supervisory strategies related to compliance and partnering with the agency's other units that are responsible for evaluating safety and soundness. The third division is Community Affairs, and it continues to support bank CRA efforts and to, and to provide outreach to bankers and community-focused organizations on a broad range of issues. Already, this new business unit is making the CRA examination process more efficient and more timely. We have taken steps to implement the latest CRA guidance and provide training for our examiners as well as uh, bankers and community organizations. A review of examination procedures is underway to identify policy and process improvements and we are developing new examination tools to support more rigorous and transparent evaluations of CRA compliance. It is responsible for the agency's supervisory strategies related to compliance and partnering with the other uh, units that are responsible for uh, CRA. Another top priority for me as comptroller has been establishing a framework for encouraging responsible innovation in the bank federal banking industry. Since 2015, the OCC has been conducting research and engaging in discussions about innovation in financial technology or fintech with banks and other companies, communities and consumer groups, academics and other regulators to lay the groundwork for this effort. Our primary reason for developing this framework is to ensure that the federal banking system can continue to adapt to meet the needs of bank customers and to harness the potential for responsible innovation, which in turn promotes fair access and greater financial inclusion. Last year, I spoke with you about this potential as well as its limitations, and the takeaway hasn't changed. Innovation and new technologies offer the promise of great improvements in access for those who need it the most. But apps are no substitute for a bricks and mortar presence in low to moderate income communities. In October, I announced the OCC's framework for responsible innovation and established the agency's new Office of Innovation, which is to be the primary or central point of contact and clearinghouse for requests and information related to innovation issues. The Office of Innovation staff will conduct outreach and provide technical assistance and will hold office hours in cities with significant interest in financial innovation to make candid regulatory advice more accessible to more people. The office will promote awareness and training among OCC employees as well to improve our understanding of these important issues and lead our collaboration with other regulators, for both foreign and domestic. The acting chief innovation officer is busy fully standing up this office, and over time, I think it will prove to be a valuable resource for banks, communities, and fintech companies as well. And I encourage you to engage with this office on the development and exploration of new and innovative financial products. 
The agency also recently published a draft of a supplement to our licensing manual for comment, we put it out for comment, that provides additional detail on how the OCC would evaluate applications for national bank charters from fintech companies. It describes how the agency would supervise these banks and articulates our expectations for how these banks would ensure fair access and fair treatment for all customers. The supplement also documents our expectation that an applicant that intends to engage in lending or to provide financial services to consumers or small businesses would include a financial inclusion plan as a component of its business plan in its application. The nature and extent of the commitment would depend on the entity's business model and the types of products or services it intends to provide. The OCC would include in a preliminary conditional approval any of any special purpose national bank charter with a business plan that includes lending or providing financial services to consumers or small businesses, an enforceable condition that will require the bank to implement its financial inclusion plan. The supplement does not establish any new authority, a new charter, or a new policy in this area. It builds upon current authority, rules, guidance, and processes that exist and can be applied to chartering and supervising fintech companies engaged in the business of banking. Although the OCC typically does not solicit comments in, on procedural manuals and supplements such as this, we wanted to remain consistent with our guiding principles of transparency and fostering an open dialogue with stakeholders so that the, and as a result, the OCC will accept comments on this document through the close of business on April 14th. Taken together, these two organizational changes will improve the OCC's ability to respond to forces that are reshaping the financial services industry around us today. Our aim is to ensure that federally chartered banks offering financial solutions powered by innovative technology meet our expectations for compliance and fair access and operate in a safe and sound manner. Our overreaching goal, our overarching goal, is to ensure that 21st century banks have 21st century supervision. <laughs> Ensuring that the federal banking system is composed of institutions that effectively serve customer needs begins before we supervise. For instance, when the OCC re reviews a bank's application to merge with or to require, acquire another institution or to establish a new bank with a national bank charter, we consider the effects of the proposed business action on the convenience and needs of the community to be served. For depository institutions, of course, we take into account the CRA performance record of the banks involved. We look at the addition of new products and, and potential changes in the products and services offered, and we analyze whether there will be changes in the availability of services, such as extended hours of, or, or the addition of uh, branch locations. We also carefully evaluate the public comments we receive, as well as the bank's uh, responses to those comments. And I want to acknowledge the NCRCC, NCRC's active engagement in commenting on corporate applications. When appropriate, the OCC imposes enforceable conditions on the approval of a merger or acquisition application or other licensing approval. In several cases, the OCC has directed applicants to submit CRA plans with well thought out measurable strategies to address specifically identified issues relating to CRA compliance or community needs. We expect these required CRA plans to reflect careful consideration of community needs and input, 
identify opportunities, and to address concerns raised by stakeholders. The OCC views fair access as a broad concept. It covers who is being served, what financial services are provided, and where or how they are offered. To ensure fair access, banks have to understand what their customers need and tailor their services to meet those specific needs. Fair access involves more than simply having a physical bank presence. Responsible products and services should be designed to ensure that they do not cause consumer harm. The financial needs of customers in all walks of life should be met, including individuals outside the financial mainstream. Banks that reassess their product offerings and understand who their customers are and how to expand their customer base by promoting financial inclusion will be the ones most likely to thrive and to succeed. Correspondingly, our CRA evaluations recognize that alternative delivery systems for financial products and services can offer cons customers added convenience and expand access. Last year, the federal banking agencies revised the CRA questions and answers to address issues related to innovative financial services and how fintech-enabled alternative delivery systems are considered. The central question in, in determining CRA consideration is how well alternative delivery systems serve low and moderate income geographies and individuals. Banks should be able to demonstrate that alternative delivery systems are accessible and effective in delivering financial services, particularly those that help meet identified community needs. A variety of factors will be considered, including ease of access, whether physical or virtual, the cost to consumers compared with the institution's other delivery systems, the range of services delivered, the ease of use, the rate of adoption, and the reliability of the system. The revised CRA questions and answers also address concerns we've heard about using alternative data sources to establish credit history, such as checking accounts, utility payments, and rental payments. The revised guidance cautions that CRA consideration is only appropriate for the use of alternative credit histories that are consistent with safe and sound banking practices while benefiting creditworthy low or moderate income individuals who would otherwise be denied credit. To sum up, I'm proud of what we have accomplished at the OCC and the steps we've taken to ensure that our agency can succeed in this important part of our statutory mission. The OCC has an organizational structure prepared to meet the supervisory challenges of the future. We have sharpened our focus on compliance and consumer protection in a landscape of rapid technological change. We have broken new ground with enhanced compliancy, compliance policies and enforcement to ensure that vulnerable consumers are treated fairly. We assess community needs when considering merger and acquisition applications and, where necessary, impose conditions to address fair access and fair treatment through the implementation of CRA plans. Also, through our outreach efforts, we continue to work closely with bankers and community-focused organizations to build awareness about community and economic development opportunities. And in this vein, I want to uh, plug, for Barry Wides in particular, uh, a community development newsletter and, and program we have on multifamily -affordab multi affordable housing, which will be released uh, today or tomorrow. And I encourage you to look at it. It's very... Uh, very valuable and thoughtful product. In, in closing, I want to say that in the middle of such change and potential future developments, one thing that does not change is the OCC's commitment to a safe and sound banking system that protects the rights of bank customers. 
That is a part of the bedrock of our mission. It has been so for 153 years. Stable banks, strong communities, and fair access to financial products and servicing. Thank you very much for your attention, and have a great uh, conference. Thank you.